Now we have to add and subtract fractions with different denominators. Hopefully same denominators was easy. This is what you do with regular fractions. Let's say you wanted to add 7 ninths plus 1 sixth. This is what you did before. You have to get a common denominator. My 6 and 9 are different. You take the biggest one, see if it works. 6 does not divide evenly into 9. So then I work up in multiples of 9, which means the 9's times 2 9's are 18. 18 will work. 18 will be my lowest common denominator. Then, depending how you learned it, you said 9 into 18 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Or you said, what do I multiply 9 by to get 18? 2. So I multiply the 2 by the 7. The 9 into 18, 2. 2 7s are 14. What do I multiply 6 by to get 18? 3. So I multiply 1 by 3. I just add my numerators. I get 17 18 So that's how I add regular fractions. And I'm not going to change you because regular fractions, I would still do it that way. But I'm going to show you a different way because this is how we're going to do it in algebra. In many other countries of the world, this is how they add fractions instead of doing it this way. So first, let's say I'm going to do it horizontally. 7 ninths plus 1 sixth. Just to show you it works. I get my common denominator, which is 18. Then, I have one rule. I take my 18, multiply by each term, and cancel. So, I'm going to multiply this by 18, this by 18 must cancel. This 9 and this 6 should cancel to 1 or I made a mistake. So, if you want to, you can put these over 1. But 9 into 9, 1. 9 into 18, 2. 2 times 7 is 14. 6 into 6, 1. 6 into 18, 3. My plus attaches to the 1. I have plus 1 times 3 is plus 3. And I get 17 eighteenths. Mathematically, I'm doing the same thing. 9 into 18, 2. 2 times 7 is 14. I'm going 9 into 18, 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Done. I go 6 into 18 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 6 into 18, 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Now, like I said, I learned fractions this way. I would do it this way, but this is how we're going to do algebra. So, before we do this, I have to give you a rule how to get an algebraic common denominator. So, to get algebraic common denominator. Sounds bad in words, but when we do it, it's going to be easy. Each factor has to be represented and to the highest power. It exists in any one term. So now I'm going to say it again. Each factor has to be represented and to the highest power it exists in any one term. Each factor has to be there and to the highest power that exists in a term. I'll say it one more time. Each factor has to be there and to the highest power it exists in any one term. So, let's say I have one like this. 5 divided by x squared plus 2 divided by 3x. I have to get a common denominator. 
you get a common denominator of your numbers like you always did. So there's really a one here. So the common denominator of one and three is three. Or I can think of it as I need one of each factor to the highest power. So three is a factor, I need a three. Now, I need one of each factor to the highest power that exists. I have an x squared here and x here. So I have to have an x. I don't add them, I don't multiply them. I want the highest power that exists. There's one here, there's two here. The highest power that exists in a term is two. So my common denominator is three x squared. That's the hard part. Then you just, just have to remember one rule. I take the common denominator, no matter how big it gets, multiply by each term and cancel. All right, so I multiply by 3x squared. I multiply by 3x squared. Must cancel. These denominators should cancel to one or I made a mistake. My x squareds cancel evenly. Three times five, I get 15. Done. Over here, this is a 3x squared. My 3's cancel, but I've got to be careful. x goes into x squared, but I'm left with an x. Remember, this is times. Plus, attach it to the numerator. So plus 2 times x is plus 2x. That's my answer. Let's say I have 7 over 2x squared minus 5 over 5x cubed. Have to get a common denominator of my numbers like I always did. So the common denominator of 2 and 5 is 10. One of each factor to the highest power that exists in a term. So I'm going to need 1x. And what's the highest power that exists? 3. I don't add them or subtract them. I just take the highest one that exists. Then there's one rule you got to remember. I take my 10x cubed, multiply by each term and cancel, and everything comes out nice. I'm going to multiply this by 10x cubed. I'm going to multiply this by 10x cubed. Must, must cancel. These denominators should go to 1 or I made a mistake. 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 10, 5. x squared into x cubed, x. 5x times 7, 35x. Done. I'm over here. You can see my x cubes completely cancels. I got 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 10, 2. Then you got to be careful. This minus attaches to the numerator. Minus 5 times 2 is minus 10. I should look to see if I can factor anything or cancel. I can't cancel because i got terms. Can't factor. Well, I could factor. So on this one, I could leave it this way. Or I can factor out a 5. And I get 5 times 7x minus 2 divided by. 10x to the third. Then I look and I go, hmm, can I cancel my 5 and my 10? If they're factors, I can. If they're terms, I can't. This is a times. This is a times. I am allowed to cancel. 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 10, 2. So my answer is 7x minus 2 over 2x cubed. Then I look and I go, hmm, can I cancel the twos? If they're factors, I can. If they're terms, I can't. Well, this one's a factor, but that one's a term. So I cannot. This is my final answer. All right, let's do another one. Let's say I have 3 over x to the 4th plus 2 over x to the 5th. I'm adding fractions, they're not the same denominator, I have to get a common denominator. So I just need an x. 
to the highest power that exists. It's got to be a five. Then there's one rule. I got to remember what to do with it. I take it, multiply by each term, and cancel. Multiply this by x to the fifth. This by x to the fifth. Cancel. x to the fourth goes into x to the fifth, but I'm left with one x. x times three, three x. Done. I'm over here. My x to the fifth cancel. Remember, they're really canceling to one. So I have plus two times one, I get plus two. Then I should check, can I factor anything or cancel anything? Can't factor anything, can't cancel anything, that's it. All right, let's do another one. Let's say I have one over 10 X cubed minus four over three X. Have to get a common denominator. Common the number of 3 and 10. I take the biggest one, which is 10, see if it works. 3 doesn't go into 10. 2 times 20 doesn't work, but 3 times 30, 30 is going to be my common denominator. I need one of each factor to the highest power that exists in a term. 3. I take it, multiply by each term, and cancel. I multiply by 30x cubed. 30x cubed. Must cancel. These denominators should go to 1 or I made a mistake. 10 into 10, 1. 10 into 33. x cubed completely cancels. 3 times 1, 3. Done that part. I'm over here. My 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 30, 10. x goes into x cubed, but it's going to be left with an x squared. So you got to be careful because I got a 10 here, an x squared here, and a 4 here. So now I have to multiply. I get negative 40x squared. Can't cancel terms, can't factor anything. That's my answer. I just want to do a couple with two left. 4 divided by x squared y minus 2 over x, y squared. Common denominator, whoops, is one of each to the highest power. So I need an x. To what power? I have a 1 here, a 2 here, has to be x squared. I need a y. To what power? 2. So my lowest common denominator is x squared, y squared. To me, that's the hard part. Then I gotta remember what to do with it. I take it, multiply by each term, and cancel. I multiply by x squared, y squared. x squared, y squared. Must cancel. My x squareds cancel evenly. y into y squared, y. y times four is four y. Done that part. I'm over here. I see that my y squareds cancel evenly. x goes into x squared x. Minus 2 times x is minus 2x. I look to see if I can, I can't cancel terms. I could factor out a 2 and get 2y minus x over x squared y squared. So now, Nothing cancels here. So that means these are both right answers. This is a perfect answer. This is a perfect answer. They're just in different form. If something would have canceled, then I gotta cancel it. All right, let's just do two more. Let's say I have five over four a minus two over six a. You get a common denominator of your numbers like you always did. So, I take 6, 6 doesn't work, it's going to be 12. I just have 1a, no big deal. I take 12a, multiply by each term, and cancel. My a's cancel. 4 into 4, 1, 4 into 12, 3, I get 15. 
My A is canceled. 6 and 6, 1, 6 and 12, 2, I get minus 4. Now I look at my answer, and I do notice that I can combine like terms in the numerator. So I'm going to get 11 over 12a. I just want to do one more problem with two letters in the denominator. When I do this, I have to get my common denominator, which is one of each factor to the highest power. So I'm going to need an x to what power? 3. I'm going to need a y to what power? Four. Then I take it, no matter how big it gets, multiply by each term and cancel. So x cubed y to the fourth times x cubed y to the fourth must cancel. My y force completely cancels. x squared is x cubed x. Three times x, three x. My x cubes completely cancels. y into y fourth y cubed. So I get 3x minus 4y cubed over x cubed y to the fourth. Can't factor anything, can't cancel anything. That's it. I just want to do a couple little ones just to show you that they're all different. Let's say I have two number for denominator. Let's say I have 1 fifth plus y over 2 different denominators of two numbers. You get your common denominator, which is 10, multiply by each term and cancel. 5 into 5, 1, 5 into 10, 2, I get a 2. 2 into 2, 1, 2 into 10, 5, I get plus 5y. Can't factor anything, can't cancel anything. Let's do none with a number and a letter. Let's say I have x over 3 plus 5 over y. My common denominator is one of each factor, 3y. I take 3y, multiply by each term, and cancel. My 3's cancel, I get xy. My y's cancel, I get 15. Let's do one with two letters. Let's say I have 6 over x minus 1 over y. My common denominator is xy. I take xy, multiply by each term, and cancel. My x's cancel, I get 6y. My y's cancel, I get minus x. So, they're not that bad. Good luck with the homework.